We're rolling. Ready? I'm ready. Well, hello and welcome to this week's segment of the SharePoint video. And this week we're coming to you from Washington, D.C., live at the time of this recording, so that we can make a point about SharePoint reform. And we have a great question for you guys this week, and I'll turn it over to John at this point. Yep. Basically, we're in D.C. because one of the big topics right now is healthcare reform. And we actually came down here to lobby Congress around SharePoint information reform. Right. That we think SharePoint information is too hard to get, it's too expensive, books and classes and consultants, it costs a lot of money to go seek some outside help. So we're here to try and help provide some of that SharePoint information for free. Sounds great, and he's totally right. All that stuff is way too expensive. So in that spirit, let's give you some free SharePoint information right now. The question this week comes from Samir, and he considers himself a SharePoint rookie. So his question reads, my question is regarding the size or the footprint of a web part that is on a page when you're configuring a site. For example, if I have a web part that takes most of the bottom of the screen, I have very limited content in there, so I shrink the visible size of the web part. But I can't shrink the footprint of the web part, so I cannot add a new web part to the side of the previous one. So in other words, Samir, he's just wanting to put two web parts side by side on a SharePoint page, and he's having a problem pulling this off. That's a great question, Samir. Basically, when you add a web part to any SharePoint page through the browser, you're actually adding the web part to what's called a web part zone. The easiest way to change what you're doing is open up SharePoint Designer, connect to the SharePoint site, and open up the page template that you're actually using to drop those individual web parts on. The web part zones, you can change how many of them there are on the page, you can change the layout of them, nest them beside each other, over top of each other, and basically you have full control over where those web part zones are. And then when you go to edit the page or add web parts to it through the browser, you'll have the flexibility you need to put those web parts on the page. So uh, Samir, if you're used to using HTML, you know, pull open SharePoint Designer, you know, use that HTML to build a table, put the web part zones in each respective column of that table in this case, and then save it and, and test it out. So that's, that's exactly that, right. That's the right answer. And Samir, before you dive into that, I would recommend even checking with the existing out-of-the-box SharePoint page layouts, which is a page template, because I know that SharePoint gives you a lot of those free right yep. out of the box. And also know that they have different flavors. You've got one column, two columns side by side. It sounds like that's what he's looking for. Yep. So play around with those first and have a lot of fun with SharePoint designer and page layouts. Yep. And I also just want to make sure it doesn't matter if you're using WSS or Moss that you can use these web part pages. Right. There are a variety of templates and it use the same methodology regardless of the platform you're on. So uh, again, uh, my name is Sean Bordner. And I'm John Stover. And we'll see you next week from the SUG Weekly SharePoint Videos. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you on the SUG.org. That was a little bit better, hopefully. Maybe. Did you hit record? <laughs> no.